Welcome to My Thoughts with Dale Van Bogart, a biblical view of today's world issues. And now, here's Dale. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another edition of My Thoughts. And I want to welcome all of our faithful listeners. And I also like to welcome all of our new listeners as well. And as a reminder, all our notes are in PDF and they're located on our website, VD bm.org and on the left side uh, which is our menu you can click on the my thoughts video series and scroll down and click on any one of the links uh, if it's a series or one of our solos and you'll see our notes in PDF download them write them in your Bible have a great time study them meditate on them and grow exceedingly and abundantly in your faith. This week's segment will be is called Living Victoriously. Doesn't that sound great? Living Victoriously. And I'm going to discuss ways to live a victorious life right now. We're going to learn what victorious living is, is it possible to achieve it, and what's the secret behind it? So, I'd like everyone to open your Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter 14, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll start with the first 14 verses of living a victorious life. And when and uh, and I will be back in a few afterward afterwards I'll be back and I'll pray for you. Now there are seven characteristics of victor of living victoriously, because see many of God's children are living in defeat. They're unsatisfied and living in an unsatisfactory life. They have never entered into the experience of, of these, what I'm going to talk about, like a peaceful life. In Isaiah 26, verse 3, you will keep him in perfect peace. Those mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And they're not living the overflowing life, as in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 7. Verses 37 and 38. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, um, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Hmm. They're not living the abundant life. Also, back in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 10, verse 10, very famous verse. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come, that's Jesus now, that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. They're not living the joyful life. Again, we'll stay in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. They're not living the liberated life. In Romans, chapter 6, verse 7, for he who has died has been freed from sin. They're still wearing those spiritual chains. They're not living the triumphant life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. And most of all, they're not living the loving life. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 
So let's read our passage today. Remember, uh, that is the uh, book of Exodus, chapter 14, and we'll just read the first 14 verses. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before Pi, half, half of the rod, between Madal and the sea, opposite Baal Zephon, and you shall camp before by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are bewildered by the land, and the wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue them. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and all of his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Now it was told the king of, of, of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants were turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this? And that and that why have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. Also he took six hundred choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and, the, and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea beside Pi Hathroth before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in, in, in Egypt, you have taken us away and to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? It is, is this not the word that we... That that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better to serve the Egyptians than, than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you would see today you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold his people. So, let's start with the first one. What is meant by a life of victory? The seven characteristics that I read prior to our passage of such a life were, were just mentioned above that, that, and many other scriptures could also be cited. So let us consider the following. It is not a life in which it is uh, possible or impossible to sin, but a life in which victory over sin is possible. So the first is unattainable in this life, but the second is attainable. It is not, it, it's not an, an abnormal life, or a life to be enjoyed by just a few of God's children. But it is his promise for every Christian. It's not a life where there is no temptation, but a life where temptation is overcome. As we read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, for we don't have a high priest who, who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but or we... But, but was all in points tempted as we are, yet without sin. It's not a life of outward victory only, but a life of inward and outward victory. Also, it is not a fully grown life where, where further growth in grace is unnecessary or impossible. See, the victorious life is a life of victory over sin, self, and Satan. A 
life of freedom from the power of sin as well as freedom from the penalty of sin. A life according to Romans chapter 5 verse 10, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now the second one I mentioned, uh, is such a life really possible? Can it be achieved? Now, there's two questions we can ask on this topic. Is it God's will that we should live a life of victory? And has he made provisions for each and all of his children to be victorious? If the answer is yes to both, then we sin against him by accepting and being satisfied with anything less than his will. If it's not, then we would be uh, then we would be a sin against him to seek or to expect to live a victorious life. Now, let me reverse those two questions. So the first one, let me reverse it. Is it God's will we, his children, should live a defeated life or defeated lives? And I'll reverse the second question. Is it necessary for us to be overcome by such things as temper, touchiness, untruthfulness, pride, for an example? Let me supply the answers for you. And where I'm going to go is the Bible, because the Bible has all the answers. Let's go to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 34 through 36. And Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever or whosoever commits a sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. And actually, uh, that verse right there, actually, it sums up Romans chapters 6, 7, and 8. And I invite you to open your Bibles and read them. There are many other verses. We can go to Philippians 4.13, very famous verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a victorious life right there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God your sanctification, that you shall abstain from sexual immorality. There's your freedom. There's your victory. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 18, And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I could go on and on. You can download my notes. I've got about four or five other verses that, will, that makes it abundantly clear. God desires all, and in the Greek, all means all, desire for his children to experience a victorious Christian life. Hallelujah. And I never thought I could experience that 33 years ago. But when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I just I get going and I just and just victory after victory after victory because Jesus took care of them victories. And last of all, what is the secret to this life of victory that I've been talking about for the last few minutes? Well, the secret life to uh, or living. Uh, 
a life of victory is in fourfold. And it just simply states, number one, victory is not gained by human effort. If you think you can gain victory by yourself, well, go out and see if you can. You're probably doing it right now. If you're not saved, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're out there trying to get victory all by yourself, how's that working for you right now? I bet you that's not working real good. You might think it's working good. Sooner or later, I guarantee you, Satan will pull the rug out right under your feet. See, we shall be on the way to, a, to live in a, a life of victory when we truly learn this simple lesson. See, it, it is absolutely impossible, as I just mentioned, to live this life in our own strength. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9 states it right there. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness. And here's the reason for our failures. See, we've tried to gain the victory over sin, self, and Satan in our own strength. Sitting there, sitting there, sitting there simply saying, I don't need Jesus. I've got victory and I can do this all by myself. Once again, how's that working for you? And I guarantee you, you have failed every time. I did it before I accepted Jesus as Lord, as Lord and Savior. My wife, also the same way, until she accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Talk to any born-again Christian, and they'll tell you the same thing. See, remember, God has excluded the work of man from every tense of salvation. You cannot achieve salvation on your own. That's why God excluded it. Salvation comes through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Period. See, we are not saved from the guilt and penalty of sin by our own works. Just read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, and Titus chapter 3, verse 5. We're not saved from the power of sin by our own works. And I read that in Romans chapter 5, verse 10, just a, just a few minutes ago. We shall not be saved from the presence of sin by our own works. Gospel of John, chapter uh, 14, verse 3, states that plain as day. There's no way you will achieve victory on your own. You might think you can, but I guarantee you, sooner or later, you will get tripped up. And that victory, or whatever you think that victory is, is going to be a far gone conclusion. Second one, victory is given. It's a gift. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 makes this crystal clear. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That summed up just the last one I talked about. You want to achieve victory, it's through Jesus Christ. Victorious life is, is a gift from God, and it is offered to everyone, not a selected few, not a certain group, not a certain uh, anything else. No, everyone who receives this gift. Indeed, the victorious life which he offers to everyone, all of mankind, everybody, is the victorious life of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jesus in a human body triumphed gloriously in his life over death, and, 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 uh, over sin, and Satan. And now his victorious life is offered to all of us, everybody, as a gift to be received. His victorious life may be reproduced in and lived out through our human bodies. 
There is only one victorious life. And when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll receive that life immediately. Did you realize that? It's just that simple. Just that simple. Now, one thing you must do is let him live his life in you and through you. You become his vessel. Let Jesus guide you. Not the world. Don't go back there. That's a nasty place. Don't go back there. You let Jesus lead you. Joshua chapter 6 verse 16. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout for the Lord has given you this city. The victory over Jericho was not gained by effort and striving, but by simply trust and obedience. That victory was a gift. And the third victory, or the third one, the third secret to the victorious life, the victory is gained by choice. See, you have to make that choice. And it's vital for you to see this. You don't have to make this choice. You don't want to live the victorious life through Jesus Christ. Well, that's your choice. But you know, that needs to come with a warning label. Most of everything else got warning labels today. That needs a warning label too. Because that has eternal consequences if you choose incorrectly. See, as long as we're in this world, we're going to be faced with, 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 with a choice. You know, look at Joshua for, for a moment. We'll go back there. Say, he faced the children of Israel with a choice. And that choice was in verse 24, uh, in chapter 24, verse 15, in the book of Joshua. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods of which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in those land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, this choice involved a definite conscious act of the will. And that is up to you. See, every time we're tempted to sin, if we are to experience victory, we must deliberately choose to please the Lord Jesus Christ who's already given us. He's already gained victory for us. He's already done it. We just have to accept it. There's nothing you can do. It's already been done. Jesus is waiting to give the victory to us. And the moment we choose to accept him, we will receive his power. And it will enable us to be victorious. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. That remember that means right standing with God. And how do you get in right standing with God? Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And the last one, victory is maintained by an attitude. So what then is the secret of continuous victory? Well here, I'm going to tell you in this following sentence. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus who gives us the victory. Plain and simple. And it and, and this and uh, and the warrant for, for this is found it's found in Scripture. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy of that was set before him, endured the cross, 
despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, that's our part. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. I'll read that again. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is his part. Amen? Welcome back, everyone. And wasn't that another just just another great segment here here at my here in my thoughts just living the victorious life doesn't it just want to make you you want to live that victorious life now I know you do and to, to live that victorious life it, it's it's such a gift and it's something that even myself had to think about for many years and finally figured it out yes the victorious life is living today with the Lord Jesus Christ we just thank we just thank him and praise him for going to the cross to give us allow us to have this victorious life and giving us the power to achieve such a victorious life. Let me pray for you right now. Father Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus at your throne of grace and mercy, and we thank you for today. We thank you for this lesson, Father, and this segment that you allowed us to 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 hear and to listen to. And Father, may each and every one take this into their hearts, Father, and know that they can live a victorious life through the Lord Jesus Christ. And all that takes is for them to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And the victorious life will be theirs. Father, we thank you and praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to, right now, want to give you that opportunity you want to live that victorious life? You know you do. You know you can't do it on your own. You know you need Jesus in your life. And you can do that right now by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you can do that right now by going to our website, vdbm.org, clicking on Free Gift. And you read that entire page. And at the bottom, we have a prayer. You read that prayer and you say it from your heart, and you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and the victorious life will start becoming yours instantly. As long as you give Jesus the helm, and let him control your life. Trust in Jesus. We just thank him, and praise him, and give you and him all the glory. And we thank you for accepting Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family. Your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, your life is going to start changing effortlessly and you're going to experience that victory and living in it. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for watching this video, oh, and the other videos, of course, on our YouTube page. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe also. You can like and follow us on Facebook as well. And again, I want to thank you for watching. I pray that you received a huge blessing from this video and the others as well. So once again, as always, God loves you. We love you. Be blessed.